हेलो एंड वेलकम टू लेक्चर थर्टीन इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फिजिकल फीचर्स एंड अनरिजॉल्व इश्यूज इन द फ्लो ओवर कॉम्प्रेसर एंड टर्बाइन ब्लेड्स एंड वी हैव रियलाइज द फ्लो ओवर सक्सन सरफेस ऑफ बोथ द एरोफल्स लेट इट बी कॉम्प्रेसर लेट इट बी सी फॉर टर्बाइन फॉर बोथ द केसेस you will be having many difficulties and challenges and this this people they are exploring the possibility to resolve those issues now in sense of understanding what we say lifting force we have correlated our lifting force with the cp distribution for say particular compressor aerofoil so we have discussed what will be the cp distribution for c4 aerofoil for double circular arc aerofoil and naka 65 aerofoil and we have realized the shape of the leading edge that's what is very important basically that's what is handling your flow acceleration initially happening near the leading edge and on trailing edge we will be having the flow that's what is getting diffuse both on my pressure surface as well as on my suction surface then we have introduced a new parameter that's what is called diffusion factor that diffusion factor it was included by naka or say nasa in say 50s and 60s based on say their experimental results on casket they people they have put with the number that's what is called diffusion factor so how my flow that will be behaving on my suction surface that's what will be deciding the diffusion factor and we have correlated this diffusion factor with flow angles and one more parameter we have introduced that's what is our solidity of the blade and that solidity we have defined as a core to pitch ratio where pitch that's nothing but it is 2 pi r and to radial distance divided by number of blades we have discussed about say high aspect ratio blade we have discussed about the low aspect ratio blade and we realize by changing the number of blades basically we are changing the diffusing passage between two blade this passage that's what will be responsible for rising of our pressure so many times in order to check with the design people they are considering diffusion factor as one of the calculating parameters many times people they are using diffusion factor as a parameter and based on that assume number they are calculating the number of blades which are required for both stator as well as for rotor we will be discussing on this aspect in detail when we will be discussing say how to decide the number of blades so let's move ahead with the next so leblin he has given equivalent design diffusion factor so according to him he has proposed the empirical correlation this empirical correlation that's what is showing it is a function of beta 1 and beta 2 as well as it's a function of my s by c ratio and according to him if we consider we are having off design condition that's what he said like it's a local change of incidence angle still we have not introduced this parameter but still let me know and let me tell you say when we say off design condition that means my compressor it is been designed for particular mass flow rate and for particular speed the change of your speed that means your peripheral speed for velocity triangle that will be changing and if that's what is your case my flow will not incident at the angle for what it is been designed that's what is called off design condition in line to that we will be having say our mass flow rate that's what is changing from design condition towards the low mass flow rate side even for the high mass flow rate side under that condition also in my velocity triangle the parameter called axial velocity that's what is going to change and that will be changing my blade angles or blade incident angles so according to him he says like we can calculate equivalent diffusion factor that's what is nothing but 
my incidence angle at that particular incident minus design angle and this is what is a formula for that. He has introduced a parameter called k parameter. According to him, this k will be 0 0.0117 for Naka 65 aerofoil and 0 0.007 for C4 circular arc blades. Okay, And blade loading limitation that is what is we are calculating based on this Livlin's equivalent factor. He said that need to be less than 1.6. So, many times during the design incidents, people they are taking this parameter also into the consideration. But mostly, most preferably people they are going with the diffusion factor what we have discussed in the last session. Now, let me introduce a new parameter that is what is called say degree of reaction. So, fluid that is what is flowing through the passage, it will experience the acceleration. And because of this acceleration, it will be having say reaction force that is what will be acting. That is based on our Newton's second law of motion. This logic of degree of reaction that was applicable for say turbines. So initially before gas turbines, people they have designed the steam turbines and based on that concept, people they have started designing the gas turbines. So now this diffusion. Uh, this degree of reaction parameter that is what is equally applicable here even for say compressor. So, it says for compressor the measure of conversion of your kinetic energy into potential energy through the diffusion can also be measured by using the reaction parameter. That is what is called we are getting what we say in sense of our pressure rise. Okay. So, this is what will be giving you idea like what will be the contribution of your pressure rise both by rotor as well as by stator. Okay. So, from our second law we can say Tds equal to dh minus say Vdp that is what is dp by rho. If we consider our compression process to be isentropic process, we can say my enthalpy and pressure they both are in relation. So, here if you recall, we have discussed our TS diagram. Okay, On that TS diagram, my station 1, that is what is representing my entry condition. My station 2, that is what is representing my exit condition of rotor. And station 3, that is what is my exit condition from the stator. So, you can say for stage, my entry condition is 1 and my exit condition, that is what is at station 3. Okay. So, let me put this parameter say degree of reaction. This degree of reaction we can write down in sense of say static enthalpy rise in the rotor divided by static enthalpy rise in stage. So, if I am writing that we can write down say my enthalpy rise in the rotor that is what is H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H1. So, that we can represent in sense of temperature we can say T2 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T1. It is nothing but my delta T0 in rotor divided by my delta T0 in the stage. For axial flow compressor we are assuming our axial velocity to be constant and as I told this earlier we are having our entry absolute velocity and exit absolute velocity that is what is coming to be same. So, for that purpose we can say my delta T for stage that is what is equal to delta T0 for the stage. Okay. Now, what we learn from our basic fundamental equation for the specific work, we can write down our work it is m dot Cp delta T that is what we can represent in sense of m dot into u Cw2 minus Cw1. So, this Cw1 minus Cw2 that is what we can represent in sense of our flow angles that is alpha 1 as well as in sense of alpha 2 and beta 1 and beta 2. Now, if I consider this as a control volume and if I will be applying say my steady flow energy equation for this particular stage, we can write down for work done it is Cp delta Tr plus 1 half C2 square minus C1 square. 
and this work done for my rotor i can write down it is cp delta tr that's what is we are writing in terms of my aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work to be same and this is what is representing my velocity component if that's what is your case and if we are using our velocity triangle we can write down my cp delta tr in sense of angle tan angle so this is what is representing my tan theta okay now if i'll be putting that together in in the formula for my static enthalpy rise for rotor divided by static enthalpy rise in the stage we can write down this equation in sense of uca alpha 1 and alpha 2 on simplification my degree of reaction that's what is coming 1 minus ca by 2u tan alpha 2 plus tan alpha 1 now what we learn from our velocity triangle we can write down by u u by ca1 that's what is equal to tan alpha 1 plus tan beta 1 so u2 by ca2 that's what is equal to tan alpha 2 plus tan beta 2 this is what we have discussed why we are writing u1 and u2 so if i am simplifying this equation i can write down my degree of reaction that's what is given by ca by 2u tan beta 2 plus tan beta 1 so this formula that's what is defined as say degree of reaction we can write down this degree of reaction both in relative blade angle we can write down that in sense of absolute flow angle also now if this is what is your case what we learn say this is what is my basic velocity triangle at the mid section you can say now for this velocity triangle we already have discussed how we are plotting our velocity triangle let me put this velocity triangle at the tip region so if i'll be putting at the tip region you can say this is what is my u tip i will be having my relative velocity component that's what is v1 dash and my angle that's what is beta 1 dash at the entry same way if i am considering at the exit of my rotor i will be having my outlet relative velocity as v2 dash and i will be having my angle as beta 2 dash so this is what is representing how my flow angle and my relative velocity that's what is going to change near my tip region okay now if i'll be talking about the hub region i will be having this kind of configuration at the entry i will be having this as my velocity triangle at the exit okay now just remember my degree of reaction that's what we are writing in sense of c by 2u tan beta 1 plus tan beta 2 now at all stations if you are looking at hub at mid section even at the tip section my beta 1 and beta 2 they are going to change if i consider i am having my axial velocity to be constant this parameter will remain same and this u it is nothing but my peripheral speed at particular location so you can understand like with change of my radius my degree of reaction also is changing so you can say my degree of reaction that's what is varying from this mid section it is varying towards the shroud it is also varying towards your say hub region okay so we are having this kind of diffusion or uh, this kind of degree of reaction variation along the span okay now let's move towards the next if i am writing my degree of reaction in this formula it says 1 minus ca by 2u tan alpha 2 plus tan alpha 1 and this is what is in sense of beta 1 plus beta 2 now let me assume my degree of reaction to be say 50 percent when i say my degree of reaction that's what is 50 percent so i can write down this degree of reaction as 0.5 and if i try to simplify this equation i will be coming up with the kind of configuration where it says my 10 alpha 1 and 10 beta 1 they both are same it means my alpha 1 and beta 2 are same in other sense it says my alpha 2 and beta 1 that's what is same so it says my alpha 1 and beta 2 are same alpha 2 and beta 1 that's what is same 
or in other sense if you are putting in sense of velocity term it says my absolute velocity at the entry of my rotor and my relative velocity at the exit of my rotor same way my entry velocity relative velocity at the entry of my rotor v1 and my exit absolute velocity they both will be coming same so we will try to understand what is the physical meaning of that if we say we are having this alpha 1 and beta 2 that's what is same and alpha 2 and beta 1 that's what is same so in your velocity triangle you can say you will be having change of all these angles if this is what is a kind of configuration we can say that's what is called symmetrical bleeding we will see what we mean by symmetrical bleeding it says when i write say my degree of reaction that's what is 50 percent so it implicates like 50 percent of my diffusion that's what is happening in my rotor and remaining 50 percent that's what is happening in my stator okay and this is what is giving us idea how good the diffusion that's what is happening within my passage now let me tell you say when i have started with the discussion for the construction of axial flow compressor that time we were discussing say purpose of my rotor that's what is to have you know conversion of my kinetic energy into potential energy or we can say that's what will be giving rise of my pressure and purpose of stator it was to guide the flow but looking to this you just realize we are having stator they are also doing the diffusion work so now the thing is it is not only to guide the flow there are many designs where people they are doing diffusion both in rotor as well as for stator okay so we need to understand one part here like how we are dividing our diffusion work that's what will be giving us what will be my degree of reaction okay now here if i'll be putting my symmetrical kind of configuration so suppose if i consider my flow that's what is entering with some absolute velocity at rotor okay so you know like here if i'll be writing i will be having my you know angle that's what is alpha 1 and based on your velocity understanding i will be writing my flow which is entering inside my rotor with my relative velocity v1 okay and that's what will be coming out from my rotor at some angle we say that's what i say my angle beta 2 now according to our concept for 50 percent reaction what it says i am having my alpha 1 that's what is equal to beta 2 so here if you say this is what is my alpha 1 that's what is equal to my beta 2 okay same way we can say what is my absolute velocity at the entry that is c1 it is same as my relative velocity at the exit which is v2 okay and here if you look at careful if we are doing this kind of configuration my absolute velocity that's what is coming out from my rotor that is going to be large okay so my c2 that's what will be going to be large now with this absolute velocity my flow that will be entering inside my stator and we are looking for our exit to be supposed say axial under that condition i will be having my diffusion that's what will be happening from c2 to c1 okay so this is what is representing my velocity triangle when i am having my flow which is entering at some angle alpha 1 using my inlet guide vane okay where i will be having my alpha 1 equal to beta 2 and i will be having my beta 1 equal to alpha 2 okay now let me consider suppose say i am having my flow entry that's what is happening actually so you can say this is what is representing my flow entry that's what is say axial entry if that's what is your case according to our understanding for symmetrical blading my alpha 1 that's what is coming to be 0 okay that means my beta 2 is coming to be 0 so you can say i'm having my entry to this rotor it is axial 
my exit to this router that is also axial. Okay, and I will be having say this absolute velocity component that's what is coming to be large and that's what will be passing through this stator passage and that's what is giving me what we say in sense of diffusion. So according to what we have learned say degree of reaction to be 50 percent maybe you can make your velocity triangle accordingly. Just look at carefully saying like what inlet condition that's what is given whether you having axial in entry or it will be at certain angle. Okay. Now let us move to this particular chart. This is what is a very good representation and very good understanding what we mean by having your degree of reaction. Okay. So very first that is what is representing my rotor and stator combination we can say as a stage for which my degree of reaction is say 0. This is what is representing my degree of reaction to be 4.5 and this stage that is what is representing my degree of reaction to be 1 or say 100 percent reaction. 0.5 I will say 50 percent reaction and 0 I say 0 percent reaction. Okay. Now what we have understood my degree of reaction that is what is basically representing what is my enthalpy rise in my rotor and what will be my enthalpy rise in my stage. Okay. So here if I consider my degree of reaction to be 0 the meaning is my enthalpy rise in rotor that is what is 0. So if I am plotting my variation of pressure you can say my entry station is 1 my exit station is say 2 for the rotor from 1 to 2 I will not be having any rise of pressure. So that is what say my pressure remains constant. Okay. Now if you look at carefully it says when I am having my degree of reaction to be 0 under that case have look at this passage of the rotor. So here if you look carefully my entry area and my exit area they both are same. Okay. It is not having any change of passage shape. So this is what is a kind of blading it is called impulse kind of blading. Okay. Mostly this kind of rotors are supersonic rotors. They have the special application as and when it will be coming we will discuss. Okay. Now it says I am having my passage area at the entry and my passage area at the exit of rotor that is what is constant. Now what happens from the station 2 my flow will be entering inside my stator and if we go carefully here this is what is my entry area and this is what is my exit area. So you can say my stator that is what is having say diffusing passage. So you can say because this is what is making a diffusing passage I will be having my rise of pressure from station 2 to station 3. Okay. So this is what it says when I am having my degree of reaction to be 0 then there is no pressure rise that is what is happening in my rotor. The whole diffusion or pressure rising that is what is happening only in stator. Okay. Now let us move to the next case it says when I am having my degree of reaction to be 50 percent. So what we realize say 50 percent of my diffusion that is what is happening in my rotor and 50 percent diffusion that is what is happening in my stator. Okay. If that is what is your case you can look at carefully I will be having my rotor passage entry area and exit area they are different. Okay. Same way if we are looking at what is my entry area at the stator and what is my exit area at the stator they both are different. That means my entry area is lower my exit area is larger. So here if you look carefully what it says if I am talking about the pressure rise it says from station 1 to 2 I will be having the rise of pressure and remaining pressure rise that is what is happening from 2 to 3 in my stator. 
Okay. So, this is what is the physical meaning of what we say 50 percent reaction. Okay. Now, here if you look at this is what is my third case where my degree of reaction that is what is coming say 100 percent. So, what is the case if you look carefully for my rotor no, I will be having my passage area that is what is changing from entry to exit. Okay. So, you will be having the diffusion that is what is happening only in rotor and if we go carefully here in this case my stators are of impulse type where I am having my entry area and my exit area to be same. Okay. So, this is what is giving us idea how my blade shape that is what is changing. Let me tell you when we have started discussing about the degree of reaction that time I told this degree of reaction that is what is a parameter which is changing from my hub to tip. Okay. So, you can say maybe near hub you will be having some degree of reaction, maybe at mid section you will be having some degree of reaction, at shroud you will be having different degree of reaction. Okay. So, this is what is giving us the passage shape that is what is changing between rotor blades and between my stator blades. Okay. Now, here it is written say most of the German designs during second world war when the people they were developing say engines they were preferring to go with say having configuration with the degree of reaction to be 100 percent. Okay. So, most of the German designs for axial flow compressor what you find they are having degree of reaction to be 100 percent means hold their diffusion they are doing only in rotor stator that is what is only guiding the flow. It has nothing to do in sense of rising of the pressure. Now, if you look at for Americans, European or say Russian designs people they are going with the 50 percent reaction they feel it is to go on the safer side. So, what passage safe what we are looking at this moment that is what is very important. Okay. When we look at our velocity triangle you may be realizing near the hub region we will be having our degree of reaction that will be coming low. Okay. Because my peripheral speed that is what is lower. And when I am talking about my degree of reaction near the tip region or my shroud region where I will be getting my degree of reaction coming to be large. Okay. So, my degree of reaction that is what is varying from say hub to shroud. There are many designs in which people they are assuming degree of reaction to be constant. So, throughout the span from hub to shroud they are assuming their degree of reaction to be constant. So, when we will be discussing about the design approach for axial flow compressor we will be discussing different design approaches what people they are adopting these days. Okay. And earlier designs also we will be discussing and then you will realize in past people they were preferred to go with constant reaction kind of design say 50 percent reaction design. Most of the compressors old compressors they are designed with 50 percent reaction throughout the span. Okay. So, I am sure you got the idea, you got the glisp of what we say in sense of Leblin's diffusion factor and we have introduced the terminology that is what is called degree of reaction and we realize this degree of reaction that is what is a concept applicable to tur turbines. But here in this case we are using this equally for our compressor because compressor is a working device that is what will be converting your kinetic energy into potential energy or in sense of diffusion. So, working of my compressor I can make by using this degree of reaction calculation. So, now you can understand we are moving more towards the design aspects for axial flow compressors. So, one parameter what we have discussed in last lecture that is what was a diffusion factor. Today, we have introduced the new parameter that is what is called degree of reaction. We will be discussing ahead with more parameters 
as we go along. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next class.